Turtle Smith Stadium for a very historic day in the history of Maryland baseball. We're incredibly excited to welcome our new head coach, the ninth head coach in the history of Maryland baseball, Matt Swope. I'm Jason Yellen. I head up our communications unit. We are going to welcome them shortly, just so we have a rundown of today. Um, we'll have uh, athletic director Damon Evans. We'll introduce Coach Swope. Coach Swope will make some comments. We'll take questions from the media. Then we'll break off for one-on-ones. So at this time, I would like to call for the righty. Let's go. I head up our communications unit. We are going to. That's pretty good. Good afternoon, everyone. Today is a special day in the history of Maryland athletics. Today we get to introduce the new leader of our baseball program. A hometown hero, a Terp superstar, a Maryland alum, and a Terp through and through, Matt Swope. But first, I want to thank Rob Vaughn for his dedication and commitment to our program. He took this Maryland baseball program to great heights, uh, and we like to call them the Dirty Terps, as many of you know. And we want to wish Rob and his family well in their new endeavor at the University of Alabama. But today is about our new bench boss, the guy who's going to lead us into the future. A man who's been a part of this program for numerous years, and you're gonna hear me say a lot of things about him uh, today. But he's a native of New Carrollton, right here in Prince George's County. You see, Swope has been a part of Maryland baseball for nearly 25 years from the time he was recruited in the late 90s from DeMatha Catholic High School. And let me tell you a little bit about this uh, baseball protege. He was a superstar when he played for us here at Maryland, a four-year starter who set numerous records at this institution. At the time his career ended, he was the leader in hits, doubles, at-bats, total bases and run scored and that run scored record was just recently broke this year so as you can see he has a great pedigree swope has been a part of the greatest era in the history of maryland baseball over the past 11 years he has helped to lead this program to six ncaa regionals two super regionals 
in three Big Ten championships. And just this year, we captured the Big Ten regular season and the Big Ten tournament title. So as you can see, it was kind of easy in making this decision to bring him on board as the next head coach of the baseball program. But as I continue to look and dig deeper, Matt is directly responsible for the offensive explosion this team has had over the past three years. I've heard him called the hitting guru. I've heard other coaches around the country come to him to ask for his expertise on how they make their players better. And when I say offensive explosion, let me share with you some of those stats in and of themselves. Our baseball team has broken the record for home runs, RBIs, hits, and slugging percentage, just to name a few. And when I sat down with Matt the other day, he was telling me about something called motor preferences training. And I was trying to listen to him, and as he said it, I was like, oh, this is pretty, pretty catchy. I'll tell you what, brother, it worked out for you. It worked out quite well for you. But I'm also happy that his family is here with us today. I, as the athletic director here at the University of Maryland, am excited to welcome him and his family, Katie, and I see Baylor, Reese, I see you, brother, and Olivia, who does, lot, does not like a lot of attention, and the rest of the parents and other family that are here. You are a part of what we do. His success is attributable to all of you, because as we all know this, you cannot do it by yourself. And before I introduce this young man to you, I have to give one more stat. Over his illustrious playing career, as well as his coaching here, he has been a part of 461 wins. And we look forward to more as he takes over this program. So without further ado, it is my honor and privilege to introduce to you the ninth head coach in the 132 year history of Maryland baseball, Matt Swope. I, yep, I, we're gonna do that. Oh, okay. So I have the pleasure of presenting him with the jersey that he always wears <laughs> and a hat <laughs> that he always wears as well. Okay. And we'll, let's turn it around this way. Okay, cool. Well, that was uh, super impressive to memorize all that within two minutes. I'm definitely not going to do that. I'm just going to try to get through this without crying. Um, that's why I wore the glasses as well. So just give me a few seconds to take this all in. Um, just seeing some of the faces that are out here today, uh, Tommy Pellucci, Mike Jones, Locks is out here, Brenda, Valman, all these guys that I've been here all my life and had some sort of relationship just means so much to me. Um, it defines who I am. Uh, when Damon, when I came in and interviewed with him, he asked me um, about the job. And I said, this isn't a job, this is a lifestyle. Um, and it's always been that from the time that I was born. Um, my relationships with coaches, uh, other, other players from other teams, this truly is a family. So. Having you guys out here to support me today, I was not expecting, but very thankful and appreciative. Um, and obviously for you guys to take the time out of your day to make, make your way over here, I really appreciate that. So I'm gonna do a lot of thanking uh, because that's how I am. Um, and, and nothing happens without the people you're surrounded with. So first, I just wanna thank President Pines, uh, Damon Evans, Colleen Sorm, and Josh Kaplan for giving me this opportunity and making dreams come true. I look forward to helping our athletic department to, 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 to continue to grow as one Maryland. To Katie and our kids, Olivia, Reese, and baby Baylor, who's behaving right now, which I appreciate. Uh, thank you a lot for allowing me to be your dad and for the support. 
I wouldn't be able to do it without you. For those that are in this business, uh, the sacrifices and time are immense. I love you. To my, to my mom and dad, it's set that Ron. Thank you for your unwavering support over the years. Even when I wanted to quit my job and come back to coach at 32 years old, you guys don't know that. So I didn't come back to coaching until I was 32. Uh, to my brother and sister, Jimmy and Janie, who both passed away at a young age, um, died young. I know they're looking down on me today and there isn't a day that goes by where I don't think of you. And to my sister, Patty, thanks for always being there for me. I want to thank Rob Dawn for everything he did for the program over the last 11 years. He's a tremendous leader, a great man, and a friend that will be missed dearly. I've been with him this entire time, all through the transitions and different coaches, and we've grown a lot together. So I love him dearly and will miss him and wish all his family the best in Tuscaloosa. To Pat, we've been here a long time. I know I coached you and was hard on you. Hopefully I gave you some of that edge, which now you're giving me. Um, but thank you for always making me better, man. Thanks for always pushing the envelope and making me better. I truly appreciate you. Appreciate you. And Mo, it's only been a short two years, but it's, it's been some of the best and I love you dearly. And I appreciate you guys always both having my back. It's not always easy as a coach. To Coach Backich, you know, to whom all this started with the journey back in the late 2000s, we were trying to bring this thing back together and bring alumni back involved and, and get people involved and do all that. Um, it truly, really did start with him. So, and Coach Chef, uh, for officially hiring me in 2012, sight unseen, on recommendation from Coach Backich, I almost went to Michigan with him actually. Um, so I'm glad that didn't happen. Um, <laughs> and, and, and Chef hired me sight unseen and, and just let me do my thing, you know, threw me right into the fire. Uh, I think I learned most how to be a head coach in those first three or four years. So I'm, I'm super thankful for Coach Chef giving me that start. For those that don't know, I was born a Terp. I grew up in Riverdale, New Carrollton, and I've been coming to this campus since before I can remember. My parents are both Terp graduates and even got married in the chapel on campus. There's my fun fact for the fall meeting, by the way. <laughs> I still remember the first time I stormed the field as a kid at the Maryland football game. And all I was thinking was, is my dad going to get me if one of these guys in the yellow jackets snag me before I make it out to the field? So my dad was a DC cop at the time, so you can understand that. But, you know, it was a huge win, and, and the security let it through. And I'll never forget, you know, I got a game worn wristband from Scott Milanovic. Uh, a legendary QB here back in the day when we were on our air attack and I still have that in my memorabilia room in the basement and if any of you have not been to the house yet you need to do yourself a favor and come to the Swope house because my basement is 30 years of memorabilia decked out um, for all my turf pride and how much the DMV and how much this place means to me. Fast forward to my playing days as a turp were some of the best times of my life. Lifelong relationships were formed, including my best friend, Preston Taylor, who's here with me today. I love you so much and thank you for being here to support me throughout everything. To hear from so many of my teammates in the last few days has been surreal. Only they truly know how far we've come. For those that weren't here 25, 30 years ago when I played here, we had four scholarships in a nine team league that was a powerhouse. And we battled and had good players and did our best but for those that were here then truly know how far we've come for the program. So thank you. Over the last decade, we've established a winning culture and an expectation to win with Maryland baseball, and that will continue moving forward. When I was able to see this place packed last year while hosting an NCAA Double Regional, I was in tears, literal tears. I could not hold it back and I didn't care. It was the greatest sight of my life. It's something that I would have never dreamed of decades ago, uh, but that's the standard that has been set by us and the staff, and I look forward to help making that happen again. To our alums and former players, you are the backbone of this program. Nothing happens without players and those relationships. This game will always be about the players and relationships. 
and I'll never forget that. Lastly, to fans, recruits, and players, our mission and vision does not change. We will develop leaders and men of character. We will play hard. We will compete in the classroom and graduate our players. We will develop professional baseball players to live out their dreams. We will win championships, and we will do it better than it's ever been done before. Thank you. Go Terps. Um, Coach, you spent 25 years with this program in you know, various different roles. Um, you've called this school your dream job. Um, just you know, what does this school and this program mean to you, and how special is it to see that love and that passion reciprocated in this opportunity? Yeah, like I said, it's a lifestyle earlier. For, for those that know me, um, you know, it would have taken a lot for me to leave. I've been a Terp all my life. This is something that, you know, if Rob had stayed here, I would have stayed here probably all my life with him. Um, just being a head coach was obviously a goal, but this place meant more to me. So to see honestly, uh, for those that don't know, I, I drove on Route 1 every day to go to high school, which is why I have such a special relationship with those folks over there. Um, this has been ingrained in everything that I am. My dad was in Sigma Chi here. He used to take me back to the frat house and, and run around and play basketball. And, you know, m my whole childhood and everything about growing up was revolved around College Park. So when I'm recruiting, when, when Pap and I are coaching, and, and he went here as well, it, it, it's not hard. It, it's genuine. It's, 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 it's everything that I am. It really did define my childhood and who I am as a person. So to see, honestly, though, where we've come as a program is what I'm most proud of. And it doesn't happen without the staff and the players and the relationships. Um, I'm, I'm most proud of that because the people that just came last year or the few years ago when we've made regionals have no idea what it was like back then. Um, we were we were busing to Florida State back then. I mean, we were, and, and you know, but didn't complain, you know? I'll never forget the Carolina Duke Motor Inn, but I won't talk about that either. So, um, but I know that's a long-winded answer, but um, it comes from the heart. Other question, front row there in the middle. Um, congratulations, Coach. Kind of, you know, to stay here at Maryland, um, back home, would you call this your dream job? I would. I was advised from a few of uh, my business counterparts in my uh, interview with you not to say the dream job because it sounds desperate. Um, so I said goal instead. But now that you gave it to me, you know, I can say, yes, it's a dream job. So, yes, it's a dream job. It's been the goal since day one. Uh, like I said, my heart, my soul is here. Um, I told Damon also in our interview, sorry if I'm sharing too much, you know, that early on in my career, I actually, my, the, my detriment was I'm too passionate. I wanted to fix everything. I wanted to do it all immediately, and I just never stopped, I, you know. So I've learned how to do a better job with that over the years. But, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a dream job. It's a dream come true. On the end. Uh, Coach, congratulations. Um, can you just tell us like how this came about? Uh, I know it happened pretty quickly. Just you know, kind of take us through the process of you know how this came about and how you got the job. Well, I can tell you how it came about. Um, <laughs> Sunday night, our AC went out, and I didn't sleep all night. And then I get a call from 9:40 a.m. on Monday, and Josh says, "Can you come in and meet with Damon at 11?" <laughs> That's how it happened. Yeah, and I said yes. Uh, Katie was gone, and I, the neighbor came over, and I gave the baby to the neighbor and did the whole. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Mom thing and you know but it I felt like it's supposed to happen that way so yeah it came about fast and, and just to be honest when, when you're good this this happens when when you when you build a program when you're good um, uh, this stuff's going to happen and normally it happens fast in this type of business and that's just kind of part of it um, but I'm thankful it worked out the way it did and I'm also super happy for Rob and, and his family. Time for one more. Congratulations, Coach. Thank you. So as you reflect on just the last 12 years of being on this coaching staff, of going from being director of ops to now being head coach, how have you seen just the culture of Maryland baseball grow, and how are you continuing to grow it now as head coach? Well, what I'm most proud of, I feel like then when I started, we had no tradition. Uh, there was nothing. Uh, th there was 
there was turnover. You know, there was there were some successful years. Even my senior year, we were decent, but we were missing that that tradition. There was nothing there. There was no, nothing for former players or people to come back to or to hold on to. It was, there, there was nothing there. So when I when I came back with Coach Backage just to get involved with the players, that was the sole uh, focus was to build tradition, build something that people people could be proud of, be thankful for, that they want to come back to. So um, that's been my sole focus over the course of these 12 years. Uh, the winning is great, but to look at Pap over there and to look at Tommy and, and, and these guys that played here, that wore the jersey like I did, that walked the steps, that know the nooks and crannies of, of the different things, that means the most to me. And when, when people are proud, like the regional last year, when former players and fans and people are proud to come back here and, and they're, they're talking about it, that's what makes me so, so thankful. Hi, Matt. Uh, congratulations um, on the job. I'm, I'm curious to know, I know it's been some time since your playing days, but how much does that still um, influence and help you in your job today? Um, now, I mean, you've been an assistant, obviously, for a while, but now as a head coach as well, um, is there anything newer that you think about as from your playing days to also help you in your job and um, connect with players and, and build the program? Yeah, those that don't uh, play teach, you know? <laughs> they can't do, they teach, you know? so. It's the next best thing. You'll never have that uh, full adrenaline like it is probably as a player, but it's the next best thing to coach. And um, the best thing is, is just you form a relationship in a recruiting process with a young man, and you see him develop and grow over the years, and you see that come to fruition on the field. It's almost like having 35 kids. So that's really what's special. Uh, to answer your question directly, being a player, yeah, it, it helps being relatable, uh, especially someone that played here. Uh, I mean, I knew the dean of the CCJS department for, for the last 25 years. You know, I could actually email or text the dean because I had her when I was here. So knowing the processes, uh, knowing how things go here um, is, is definitely a plus and has definitely helped along the way. Thank you very much. We're going to do some photo opportunities. Appreciate Thank you guys for coming. I appreciate you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations. Sorry, I didn't oh, thank too many guys. No.